BodyWise Perfect Size is so happy to be talking to the amazing motivational speaker, Libra Ford. Libra, can you tell me a little bit about how you grew a small spirit into a giant one? But years ago, when people would say mean things to me before I became comfortable with what I am, um, I mean, I've had some pretty mean things say to, say to me being in a domestic violence situation. I, yeah, I shrunk. I think I was 6'5 in height, but I probably was more like three feet in my spirit and in my mind. And, uh, and then when, when I would shrink, I would shut down. You know, I, I wouldn't want to say anything. I wouldn't want to look anywhere. I just would want to run in a corner and hide. And later what I realized is that's such a prison for yourself. Um, being so, you know, shrinking that low. So I, I am very conscious, not just for myself, for anybody. When I feel like I'm in a situation where someone's trying to shrink someone and I know what that prison feels like, I'm very conscious of it, and I immediately will try to uplift someone and pull them out, you know, and help them, even if they can't help themselves in that situation. But unfortunately, a lot of people are put in those predicaments where they, they just shrink instantly, and it's very difficult for them to grow again and to come out of it. And the more time that you're put in that prison, it's just more and more difficult to get out, you know, and find that magic key that's going to have you escape. I, I have friends who knew me when I was in my situation and, that, and know me now, and they always say the same thing. You look amazing. Not necessarily that I physically look any different. or There's really nothing that's changed when you look at pictures side by side. There's a different light in my eyes. Um, there's a different energy in my conversation. There's a different confidence in how I feel about myself and what I want to do. So absolutely, I think most people that maybe have that nature to want to diminish someone, when they see me, they probably are like, oh, no, that's not the one. And it does come from inside, you know, because like I said, because when I was put in those corners, I still was 6'5". But inside, I was so small. I was so actually I my smallest in weight when I was going through the domestic violence abuse. And, but I looked the worst in my life. Um, just when I see pictures, the sadness in my face was evident. So yes, it wasn't that people thought that something was wrong with me. I used to get a comment every day when I was in my prison, shrunk, shrunken in myself. Every day, everyone I saw would say the same thing. You look so tired. And I would always say, why does everyone ask me that? Again, I would put it on everyone else. Why is everyone asking me this? I was tired of who I was. And it came out in everything that I did. And instead of me accepting that I was tired of it, I thought other people were judging me, but really in other people's eyes are your best asset. They were really seeing the truth. I was exhausted, absolutely exhausted. I was exhausted with my life. I was exhausted with my situation. I was exhausted with being shrunken all the time. Everything about it was making me tired. So yes, we have to know that it starts right here. And once I realized I was tired and I started to elevate myself out of it and start to grow again, I don't get that question anymore. It sounds like you were busy rewiring your whole belief system. And I just think in life you have to figure out which wiring do you want. Do you want to be rewired in a way that's negative or do you want to be rewired in a way that's positive? And once you make that choice, really live in that and let that rewiring happen. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to come, it's not going to come easy. But once you make that conscious choice, all the things you need seem to just show up. And it's pretty amazing. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've said to myself, well, this is what I want to do, and it's really positive. And I start walking in that direction, and all of a sudden I meet someone that's done it before, or, or I'm in a place where it's like that's all they do, or it's like out of nowhere. It's bizarre. You know, it's just, that's just the way life is. And so once you put it out there, it's going to come. It's going to come. No. <laughs> uh, I think the best example for me was uh, my decision to 
to become me again and to really stand tall and be who I am. The initial decision was within the forest of a lot of turmoil around me. And so I had to fake my happiness for a very long time until I got there. Um, and, and that was tough because everything around me didn't want that to be my reality. But once I started to fake my happiness, even in the faking it, I started to see things differently. I started to see things that I didn't see before. And things that bothered me a lot all of a sudden didn't bother me so much. People that may have said things about me all of a sudden were saying different things about me. So all of those things I started to like. And I was like, okay, so now what do I need to do to really be happy? Let me start working on those things and find my own joy. Deepa, how did you grow your spirit? Did it have anything to do with self-kindness? Right, that being kind to others has been easier for me. Um, being kind to myself, myself is a daily, moment-to-moment -moment practice that I fail at often. I can be very, very hard on myself. Um, and so one of the things that I've learned to do in those moments is reach out to people that I know love me and know the core of me. And, uh, and I try to reach out to them before it becomes this nightmare conversation in my head that I can't quiet anymore. When the whispers become a little bit louder, I go ahead and I call someone that I know loves me and, and I get that laughter and they, they remind me of who I am here. So the physical is not always my driving force, you know, and um, I think that's important for all people to understand. The physical is only one part. For some of us, the physical is a drawing part. Like I now understand that my height is a draw for certain things that that I've been here, that I've been placed here to do, but it's not everything. You know, that's just the beginning. So what do you have to offer once that draw comes in? You still got to find out what you have to offer, and that takes a lot of work. And finding people that love you to help you pull it out is real important, really important. Make sure someone around you is a good complimenter. And when they compliment you, you want someone that compliments you that you trust, you know, that would say it in a way that you can receive it. But more importantly, after they compliment, believe them, you know, and, and really live with that. Accept it because that is major. I think um, for a long time I wasn't a good receiver of compliments because I was so busy denying myself of who I was that when people would compliment me, I didn't hear them. I would kind of deflect it. But now I receive it with grace, not because I'm like haughty, but I understand now that if people want to say something, it's what they believe. And so I tell my girls all the time, sometimes when you have difficulty with what you look like, other people's eyes are your greatest assets because what they see is different than what you may think because we pick ourselves apart. So sometimes you need to take that asset with you no matter where you are. And I've got friends in my life who I know when they look at me, they see things a certain way. I don't necessarily agree with them, but sometimes when that voice is so loud, I'm like, okay, I need that asset. I'm going to go get that asset so I can hear what I need to hear and make that voice louder than these other things that I'm trying to make myself not uh, out to be. I don't really think a lot of it's inner, but a lot of it's, you know, people around you. I think that the power in life is sharing. The power in life is living with each other and through each other. Um, not to say that anyone's better than another, but there's, there's, there's a lot that we can bring from in here, but there's a lot that we can get from others. And so I really believe that other people's eyes are your best asset because they're a lot gentler than our eyes will ever be on ourselves. <laughs> Libra, how did you become a better receiver of compliments? I had to start writing them down. So when people would say them to me, I would acknowledge it. I, well, I had this rule. First, I said, I told myself, when someone gives you a compliment, don't say anything. Just look at them, listen, and then say thank you. Nothing else. Don't even try to give another whatever. Just say that. Just stop. Thank you. And so once I started doing that regularly, then I started writing the compliments down. And, and then I would go home in my own quiet time and read them. And I would read them over and over again, not because I was, like, beefing myself up, but really to acknowledge what they were saying. 
So then my next step was to then, when they were saying it, really listen intently with the same kind of energy I had when I'm reflecting by myself and give them that attention, like I'm receiving it now, I'm receiving it. And then my thank yous became different. You know, they were more genuine. So it wasn't easy at first. I had to really fake it, like, thank you. And then I would just stand there, like, oh, gosh, what I did out. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, after reading them to myself and writing them down and reading them and writing them down, I start to really believe people. You know, um, there's some very genuine people out there who say great things. And when you can't accept it because the negative voice is so loud, it's just, it's, it's not a cool thing. I mean, it's a compliment when you receive a compliment. It's almost um, like... If someone gives you a gift and you say thank you, you're excited, you know, you wouldn't take that gift and throw it on the ground and start stepping on it, you know, that would be rude. And so it's the same kind of concept, you got to receive it. Would you change being tall Libra? I wouldn't, I wouldn't change for the world. I tell people that all the time because it's a question, I get two questions every day. How tall are you? Obviously. And the next one is, do you enjoy being tall? And, and I know people are always shocked because my face will light up and say, Absolutely. <laughs> Not because of anything aesthetic for myself, but for what it does. Just talking to this person right now, that is amazing to me that, that my height was able to generate a conversation with someone that has something to share. You know, it, If we accept it. our differences, then we also accept our journey in life. Once you try to deny the difference, then you're, you're basically taking away the opportunities that maybe in front of you to do great things, amazing things. I think the most important thing that I've learned that I hope people can get from me is your difference should never be thought of as an indifference. You always want to secure your difference, live in it, and make sure that everybody around you receives it well. And if they don't, you don't need them in your life. Um, there is something special about being different. There's something amazing about being unique. And we don't always know what those things mean. But if you stay in it and really receive it and accept it, one day you'll figure out why you have those differences. Body Wise Perfect Size wants to thank Libra for sharing her amazing wisdom with all of us.